The Earth's geological skin, the lithosphere. One of the great scientific discoveries of the 1960s was the recognition that the floor of the oceans was being formed at mid-ocean ridges. It's a cornerstone of plate tectonics, seafloor spreading, but it means that the plate surface must also be being consumed where continents collide or by subduction at some continental margins. These are plate boundaries containing plate interiors that remain relatively rigid. In this case, the Indo-Australian plate, and we can illustrate what's going on in profile. Plates, lithosphere, overlying less viscous, a stenospheric mantle. The plate surface is created at the Southeast Indian Ridge, the once continuous thicker oceanic crust of Kerguelen and Broken Ridge has been ripped apart. And to the north, the floor of the Indian Ocean is being taken back down beneath the Eurasian continent. So seafloor spreading and subduction working together. Subduction is the motor of plate tectonics pulling the plates apart. So how do we know all this? In other films, I've looked at how seafloor spreading was discovered in the 1960s. Now it's time to look at subduction. And the first hints came from gravity anomalies. These reflect variations in the support of mass, especially in the outer parts of the Earth. If you like, where the Earth's surface is being held up, in warm colours and pulled down in blues. But this image jumps the gun. We must go back 100 years and introduce Felix Veining Mainz, a Dutch geophysicist who created an instrument for making precise measurements of the Earth's gravitational field at sea. And he put it on a submarine to go deeper than the waves for the necessary stability to make measurements. The Dutch Navy provided him with a submarine based in what were the Dutch East Indies. And this is Fenny Meinert's map, made in the 1920s. Remarkable tracks of gravity anomalies that were quickly termed Meinert spans. For Fenny Meinert, red represents negative anomalies. Nowadays, we use blue. So this is the modern map, lots more detail, but the same broad pattern. So what's going on? In a squashed up geological interpretation, well, here's the geology, and we can plot the bathymetry, that's topography, up, and here's the gravity data. There's gravity lows over the ocean trench. The bump corresponds to a thick pileup of sediment, and ahead of the trench is an outer gravity high. Staying with the modern mapping, let's zoom in to part of the Sunda Trench south of Java. The trench is obvious, a dark blue deep water scar. And wow, we can see it on the gravity map. So this is the trench system. And this, the outer gravity high. Although our profile reflects modern understanding, Veni Mainz realised that the floor of the ocean was being pulled down into the trench, flexing the lithosphere rather like a springboard diving board, and the outer gravity high was the key clue. And it makes for some strange geography, like Christmas Island, all alone in the Indian Ocean. Can you spot its gravity signal? Here, it's a seamount and it's not alone, but the others haven't been elevated quite enough to poke out of the sea. On land, Java is well known for its chain of major active volcanoes and older ones too. And here's their gravity signal, each with its positive gravity anomaly. So our story begins with gravity anomalies Veni Meinitz realised that lithosphere was being forced, pulled down at ocean trenches. 
This is the first step on our subduction evidence trail. But how can we detect the subducting slab? Next stop, Japan in the 1930s. This is a map made by geophysicist Kibu Wadati, and it shows the depth of earthquakes principally across the island of Honshu, contoured up in kilometres. The earthquakes get progressively deeper going west. Hmm, interesting. So now our trail leads to Tonga in the southwest Pacific and the American geophysicist Hugo Benioff. It's 1948. He referred to the Tonga Trench as a deep and this is his profile of earthquakes, again diving down into the earth. So these inclined zones of earthquakes in the upper mantle are now known as Wadati Benioff zones after their discoverers. Nowadays, global earthquake catalogues give a much more complete picture. If we look at the different depth distributions, we can see that the mid-ocean ridges, the constructive plate boundaries, are characterised by only having shallow earthquakes. Whereas the deep earthquakes, well, they're in the subduction zones. We can go back and look at Japan, then Tonga, and finally for today, Java. So this is Wadati's area and modern data. Earthquakes colour coded for depth. So let's strip away the mauve shallow ones, which is faulting through the Earth's crust to reveal the others and the earthquakes do indeed form distinct depth bands and they get deeper, going west beneath Honshu, just as Wadati showed. Now to Benioff's site. Again, the modern data and the deeper earthquakes, distinct depth bands systematically deeper to the west. And now to Java. Strip away the crust on faulting, and a systematic pattern below. Earthquakes get deeper, moving away from the trench. So geologists can detect slabs of lithosphere being taken down into the mantle by gravity anomalies and earthquake distributions. But perhaps we've run the story too far forward. This understanding came well before the realization of its tectonic significance. That had to wait until the recognition of seafloor spreading in the 1960s, but it meant that once that was done, subduction could be built in to the idea of plate tectonics. The next task for us now is to image the slab, and that had to wait until the 1990s and improvements in computing. And this allowed for seismic tomography to image deep inside the earth. Here are some examples. The slabs are in blue. So these images are created by seismic tomography. Essentially, these are parts of whole earth CAT scans. Simply, it works like this. With an earthquake and receivers, trying to image something in the mantle, which transmits, in this case, seismic energy more slowly than its surroundings. The earthquake emits energy, and for ray paths passing through this body at depth, the energy arrives at the receiver slightly later than expected. So now repeat with other earthquakes. Obviously, the more the better. The resultant images of delay time are displayed using a colour bar. Reds are for parts of the mantle that transmit slower, blue, faster. Blue because cooler mantle will transmit seismic waves faster. Here are some tomography images. Blue cold mantle with broad tracks going into the earth and they correspond with the earthquakes, the Wadati Benioff zones. We're imaging slabs. And the reds above, warm volcanic arcs. Let's look at another, more recent study from Sumatra. We can tour along the slab, slice after slice, starting in the northwest. The floor of the Indian Ocean, diving down beneath Sumatra. 
So how steeply the slab goes into the mantle changes, and so too, apparently, how far the slab goes. And you can get more precision if local earthquakes are used for imagery. Here, for profiles near Timor and Flores, we're beginning to image more complexity, older slab fragments from this complex tectonic area. It's all about computer power. The better the computers, the more earthquakes can be handled, so the better the tomographic image. So seismic tomography means we can image the slab. But is the plate boundary doing what it needs to? Is the oceanic lithosphere moving down? Does the subduction zone do this? Well, actually, it's a type of fault. Indeed, some people call subduction zones megathrusts. Thrusts form as rocks are pushed together and the earthquake representation, a beach ball, has this pattern. Different types of faults have different beach ball patterns and some earthquake scientists colour code theirs for easy reference. We're looking for these thrusts. So to the Java area and indeed there's a broad band of thrusts exactly as expected. But curiously, they're rift-type earthquakes too, along the southern edge of the trench. But that's okay. It's explained by cracking as the outer rise flexes, which was explained by Veni Mainz. And so that's how we know about subduction. A journey through earth science history and different types of geophysics. Subduction is one of the fundamental components of plate tectonics, along with seafloor spreading, and it's a motor for plate tectonics. It's how our planet works.